Preview. 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 Hey everyone. So this here is me. It's 14 year old Rishabh Jain giving his first major talk in front of an audience of 6,000 at TEDx Gateway in Mumbai, India. And so without further ado, this is Rishabh Jain. I'm now grown up three or four years later. And so I'm going to be reacting to my own talk that I delivered at the age of 14. <laughs> Okay, I just have to pause it for a second there because that bass boosted intro that TEDx Gateway has, it's I've never seen it. You know, it, it, nobody else beats that, right? You can listen to, you know, the major TED event, like TED Woman, uh, all of the big TEDx events, and they do not have as pristine of an intro that TEDx Gateway has. The bass boost just, you know, it's solos. Okay. So let's, let's continue on. I'm not going to pause this too much and analyze every detail, but all right, let's continue. Steve Jobs, Patrick Swayze, Nargis Dutt, and Alex Trebek. What do these people have in common? Yes, they are all famous personalities, but did you know that they have another similarity? Oh, I actually know they all have pancreatic cancer. Now, how do I know this? Because, well, one, I wrote the speech and two, I practiced that line literally like 500 times um, at these like, at, I feel like at these bigger kind of uh, TEDx and TED events, I don't know, this is like my personal experience at least, but I was instructed to like basically practice this hundreds of times and I had to deliver it in front of their staff behind the scenes, like at least 20, 30 times on site. And so this, like the, the, that, especially cause it's like the starting line at the very beginning, um, throughout the, you know, hundreds of revisions made to this speech over the course of a year, um, until it was finally delivered. That line I think was kind of always there. And so it just, it was the hook that I came up with when I was first writing the speech. And so I've just said that, and it's been ingrained in my mind, like forever. I'm going to look at this age 70 and be like, oh, I know they all had pancreatic cancer. And also, you know, obviously they're all famous uh, personalities and celebrities and stuff. Uh, and also one interesting thing is you can see here, it says like Mumbai, India in the bottom right corner. And so um, you may have noticed that I included like an Indian celebrity. And so I actually didn't know who that celebrity was, but kind of to like appeal to the audience, um, you'll notice that a couple places, like I'll be like, oh, here in India or like, oh, back in the US, like when I was doing this, right? Just to like distinguish between that a little bit. And also because I do have Indian heritage. And so I don't want people to become confused that like, hey, I was doing this research in India because I'm from the US. Um, and so anyway, continue on. They all share a disease pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is a highly lethal and incurable disease, of which survival rates have not significantly improved in the last 40 years. It is the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the U.S. and is expected to become the 98% mortality rate. All right, so I skipped a little bit there just because it's just plain statistics about pancreatic cancer. But one thing I do want to know is like on a serious note, um, the survival rates and like statistics for pancreatic cancer as a disease have actually improved um, since I gave that talk. Like not significantly where it's like, hey, now 50% of the patients are surviving, but it has improved from like five or 6% up to like the, the statistics at the time, like 6% worldwide, 8% in the US, now to like 10%, I think worldwide, or like 12% in certain nations. And so it definitely has improved um, a certain, a significant, not a significant, like a, a decent amount, I would say. And so it's like exciting to see that, like, from science and medicine and technology innovations, we are actually like making an impact on a lot of these diseases. Like, it's not just, um, you know, hey, Congress passed this bill, right? It's also science and research coming in behind the scenes to improve the quality of treatment that a lot of people are getting and improve people's lives. And so that's kind of amazing in my opinion. So let's continue on with the talk. 
I'm Rishab Jain, and my journey in the world of research and artificial intelligence has led me to create two inventions to help treat pancreatic cancer more effectively. <laughs> Ever since a young age, I have always loved science. Okay, so that has to be one of the most awkward like pauses that uh, has ever been done in a TEDx talk because the audience just started clapping. Like, I was like, "Hey guys, my name is Rishab Jain," and then they just started like clapping, or like it, it was in the middle of my sentence, and so I just stopped. But yeah, okay. I'm. I think in the rest of the speech, I just ran them over. Like they would start clapping. I just kept talking Despite over them, uh, using the speakers to my advantage. Ninety percent of pancreatic cancer patients. Yeah, so just some more info about like pancreatic years. cancer, and then we'll get into the guided by my curiosity and science. Of my I investigated if I could use my knowledge in programming and AI to make a difference. My journey to solving this problem started with learning about the pancreas. Okay, so this here is actually interesting. I want to pause this for a second here, right? Take a look at this image. This red thing here, this is the pancreas. How many of you actually knew like where specifically the pancreas was? I'm genuinely curious. Like leave leave a comment in the comment section right now if you like knew where the pancreas was. Like just tell me that because I feel like a lot of people like don't actually know like what the pancreas is or where it is. Like, obviously they've heard of like some organ, right? They've heard of like the tonsils or they've heard of the appendix or they've heard of the pancreas and they know it's like important or it's like linked to diabetes or something. Oh, there's like pancreatic cancer, but they don't know like where it is. And so I found that was kind of interesting. That's why I included it in the talk, but yeah, leave a comment if you actually knew um, where it was because uh, hats off to you is an organ located deep inside the abdomen. The pancreas is surrounded by other structures such as the stomach and spine. This position allows pancreatic cancer. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead to this animation right here. And so basically um, what I'm saying here is that I invented this tool to help improve pancreatic cancer treatment. And so this here is the demo of that tool. So let's take a look at this. Powerful beams, radiation can shrink cancer growth significantly. How many of you have ever hit a bullseye on a dartboard? I have. It can Actually, be hard, right? Now imagine that dartboard moving around constantly. This is the case for pancreatic cancer. The tumor is hard to reach and moves due to breathing. This makes radiotherapy difficult, and doctors have to add a margin around the pancreas that can result in collateral damage. Since radiotherapy sessions are lengthy and have to be administered many times, eventually, side effects develop, which can lead to death. I train... Okay, so one thing I do have to remark on is, like, um, these animations are really cool and they're from um wired and so basically wired made this documentary called living in the age of ai um and so as a part of that they actually featured me in the documentary and they made these like really cool animations to basically like display what my tool is all about and kind of how it works so i found those animations really cool and if you want to check out the documentary i'll link it in the description below but yeah just just take a look at these animations they explain it like flawlessly pcdls's artificial intelligence algorithm on thousands of mri abdominal images and told it exactly where the pancreas was over time, PCDLS learned to pinpoint the exact location of the pancreas so that a radiotherapy machine can apply radiation to that location and hit the bullseye every time. When connected to an MRI and radiotherapy machine, PCDLS will offer a high accuracy of over 98% to save healthy cells and improve patient quality of care, eventually saving lives. Okay, see, that's where the claps should have been. But like, this audience was just excited to just start clapping. <laughs> okay. It's meaning that every so, patient will skipping react ahead to some more of the raw the explanations than the intro itself. Approach, but actually, this diagram right here is really treatment. interesting. This may and so in you may recognize some, some of like the icons inside of the diagram because they come from PowerPoint. 
Um, and so basically this diagram here is explaining this concept called precision medicine. And so basically the concept is, hey, if we deliver this drug A to a group of people, some people might react positively to it, but other people, it's not going to work. And so and for some people, excuse me, it might actually have no like a negative effect. Um, and so obviously that's really bad. And precision medicine is uh, a precision technique where you can based instead on the characterize a patient based on their own characteristics, drugs, like as you can see here, delivering them each a specific the targeted drug in order to achieve like a positive impact for everyone. And so I'm going to skip ahead to now my innovation. You can hear what I did. Cancer tissue, a process known as a biopsy. Next, in the lab, DNA is extracted from this cancer tissue. In genome sequencing, this DNA is mapped out on a molecular level. Here, genetic mutations can be spotted. After all of this, a treatment plan needs to be made, and medications have to be authorized before they can finally be administered. But imagine if there was a way that we could cut this process down and start treating patients in as little as a few days. What if we could predict genetic mutations? Okay, this angle is so cool. And I'm surprised, like, I, I haven't watched this too many times, but I just really like this, this angle. Like, this, if they had, like, a high-res photo from this angle, that would be so cool. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that that's there, but I would use that everywhere. Like, that's, okay, that's a cool photo. From just a biopsy image. I invented the pancreas detective, which does just that. By harnessing AI, by harnessing AI, we can actually predict mutations from the biopsy, which is something that the human eye just can't do. Okay, so I just realized something like kind of important here. And so actually, if you look at these seats, right, they look like couches. Like, let me let me put this in full screen. So you can see there's like couches near the front, right? And so that's actually like those are couches. Um, and so basically what they had at this event, as I mentioned, there's like 6,000 people or something, 5,000, 6,000 in person. And so there were so many people that they literally had like a hundred rows. So the first couple of rows were like the premium, like expensive like seating and so for those ones people had to, like you got a couch and then later it became like um you know like chairs and then in the top thing it was like an like kind of like an auditorium with those style of seating like a theater type um seating and so that was pretty cool and then also i have one thing over here and so actually if this thing focuses properly you can see my uh, okay, that is not okay. There we go. You can kind of see my name tag for TEDx Gateway. And so over here, you can see it says Triple A and Speaker. And so they literally had like, a, like authorized or not like security codes. So if you were a Triple A like speaker or like staff or whatever, you could get past like certain gate points. And if you're like gold, then you can sit in this area and whatnot. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's like the inside of a of a like kind of a major TED uh, event. I, by harnessing AI, we can actually predict mutations from the biopsy, which is something that the human eye just can't do. I trained my invention on the most common mutated genes and a patient's corresponding biopsy. After training and fine-tuning, the pancreas detective learned how to make this match in a matter of seconds. When a patient with pancreatic cancer is expected to live just four months, every day, counts towards combating this deadly disease. The pancreas detective. Okay, so like this is actually a major part of the invention that I'm talking about here. Um, because like I, I talked to actual oncologists and this was something that they mentioned is like actually like an issue. I had hypothesized it based off the literature I was reading that like this is a gap where you can you know, save time. But I didn't realize like, will this actually make a big impact? And so when I talked to oncologists, they're like, you know, in my clinic, like if, if I could actually use this, like I would, because that can actually save like one or two weeks off the treatment time for a patient. And usually we don't wait those one or two weeks and we just give them the conventional drug because we don't have the time to do that. Versus if you wait the two weeks, like you can get them the 
matched drug properly, but you wasted two weeks of treatment time. And so it becomes this delicate balance of what to do. But if you have this type of tool where it's like an AI tool, you get instantaneous results, like one second runtime, that's you know game changing. It can help save this crucial time in a patient's fight against pancreatic cancer. Looking back at the last few years, I have grown along with my inventions. Initially, when working on such a pressing problem, it was a little bit intimidating. But my curiosity in science kept me spending more time with the problem and asking questions. Countless hours debugging my code and running experiments paid off when my tools were successful. These experiences were exciting, rewarding, and inspiring. To create these same experiences, along with my older brother, we co-founded the Samyak Science Society, a nonprofit organization that aims to promote science and technology to all children, especially those in need. Okay, so this, um, I'm talking a little bit more about my like general journey side of things. And so this organization is actually still active. In fact, we're hosting our next STEM workshop for, for young children in our local area, um, like this Monday. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of cool that although some of my research interests over the last couple of years have changed, I'm working on new projects, not necessarily in pancreatic cancer, um, that has continued actually. And so I, I've continued working on the Samyak Science Society and we're seeing a lot of impact through that. So I'm really, really proud of that. Albert Einstein once said, I'm neither especially clever nor especially gifted. I'm only very, very curious. If one Einstein was able to make such a large difference, imagine a world where we had thousands of Einsteins. By igniting that same spark of curiosity in science, we can unlock the potential of other youth. This will allow us to solve all the complex problems of our world, including pancreatic cancer. Join me to spread awareness and innovate. One day, let's cure pancreatic cancer. Thank you. All right, Risha from the future here. Now I'm going to react to a rehearsal clip that I have that's super funny. Kind of cool, the backstage, like what was happening. So this was Welcome the day before the actual the event. Break. How was your break, everyone? Fantastic. So I have a question for you. How many of you have ever tried to imagine Einstein as a kid? We probably never have. And if we have to do that, we'll probably picture a cute little boy with frizzy gray hair going everywhere. Well, our next speaker probably won't give you any insight into what Einstein looked like as a kid. And that's because he's Indian but it could definitely give you some insight into how Einstein thinks. Do you want to know what the coolest thing about him is? It's not that he's America's top young scientist of the year, or that he was named in Time Magazine's 25 most influential teens. There's something even cooler than that. Do you want to know what it is? This kid has a planet named after him. Yes, you heard that right. A planet. Can you imagine if you, the other kid in the class who likes the same girl, you're going after, you are, your competition is someone who has a planet named after him. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and give a warm TEDx gateway welcome to Richard J. Yeah, okay, so I thought that was just pretty cool. Um, not only the intro I thought was pretty funny, did a great job with that, but also just the minor details that go into making this sort of event possible from the lights, from the, you know, the cameras set up, from all those people backstage, then to the music and like the wonderful audience that's like cheering along the speakers and so like excited to hear their ideas. So I just found that that was um, a truly, really amazing event. There's a lot that went into it um, and I enjoyed it a lot. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider subscribing and watching the next video on the screen right now.